everyone. Welcome to the debut episode of our new show, Hello Fort Wayne for College TV. I'm your host, Alexandra Ruiz, and I hope you would join in welcoming today's guest. He is the sporting director and head coach of Fort Wayne FC, Mike Avery. Coach, thank you so much for joining us. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. Great. So first, I would like to talk about your experience with soccer. Um, how has it been from going to a player to a coach? Yeah, it's uh, interesting. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was, I, I want to say I was four years old when my parents put me on my first soccer team. Wow. I grew up in California. Mm -hmm. um, and the very first team with, uh, that I was on was called Las Pulgas, yeah. which is the Fleas. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we lived off of a street called Alameda de las Pulgas in mm -hmm. San Mateo, California. Um, and I don't know why I fell in love with the sport, but I fell in love with the sport. And so if you flash forward now to 50 years later, mm -hmm. I'm 54 years old now, I've been on a soccer team every single day of my life. Wow, um, so that's, that's a long time and it's a lot of teams. About 30 of those years were as a player. Um, and then about 30 of those years have been as a coach. There was a little bit of crossover when I was doing both. Um, and so... You know, my whole world, kind of the, the context of it has always been in and around the game. And yeah. so I, I think I found that coaching was the next best thing to playing. And when I couldn't do that anymore, it was, it was fun to get going with coaching. Well, that's great. You continued your soccer experience. So how long have you been a coach for? It's been uh, about 30 years. 30 years. Um, so I, I started coaching in college. Mm -hmm. um, I was an assistant coach while I was still playing professionally. Wow, that's and then, nice. Um, and then worked my way up through the coaching ranks and I spent about almost 29 years coaching college soccer. Wow. Um, most recently, uh, I was at Notre Dame for about seven years at the University of Louisville for a while and then I spent 13 years at Valparaiso, uh, where I still live in Valparaiso right now, um, but I was there for about 13 years. So, uh, And then had this opportunity to come to Fort Wayne and so it's been a, a really interesting move, really exciting and a lot of fun. Do you have any idols or people that you have looked up to that have motivated you to continue your soccer career? Yeah, you know, I, I would say probably my whole life has been kind of shaped by coaches. Um, and I want to, um, you know, kind of, you know, be around the, the game. And so I really look back to my own coaches as, as the people that I look up to the most. And probably particularly my college coach. That was a, a really interesting time in my life. Yeah. And, uh, you know, to have somebody that was a mentor and who's now a friend, um, it's been really valuable to me. And so I've always tried probably for the last 30 years since I got out of college to give my players kind of the same experience that I had. That's amazing. Um, so do you have a preferred style of play now that you're a coach or when you were a player? Did you have Yeah, you know, style? growing up in, in California and mm -hmm. in most of my life, I grew up in San Jose, California, mm -hmm. um, large Hispanic community. Uh, so I grew up playing in the park. And so I value the ball and technical players. And so yeah. I kind of have a, a mindset of a possession based game. Uh, and so when I coach now, you know, I want our team to keep the ball and not give it away. <laughs> we're not very direct. Yeah. Um, and, and so that's something that we're trying to do. We want Fort Wayne FC to have an identity in how we play so that when you watch this play, you say, oh, yeah, I know how they play. Um, and so we're working very hard at that to try and make sure that we can build from the back all the way to the front and not just be kicking it up the field and running after it. Yeah, well, it's great to have direction and being organized. What would you say led you to start the club? Well, um, the club was founded by, by there's eight owners that, that mm -hmm. are involved in the club, and I came on board later. I wasn't there on the very first day. I came on a little bit later. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it, it's like anything else. We're trying to add, uh, you know, some value to the community. It's a, it's, a, it's a club that is really rooted in trying to bring uh, positive energy to our community. We want to show off the diversity of our community. You know, we're, we're fortunate because we play the world's game. And so it's natural for us to bring people from all over the world and kind of this little melting pot of a team. Um, and so we want to show off the beauty in that. And, and so uh, it's been an incredible two years. It's been three years for the club. The first year was kind of washed out with COVID. Yeah. And so we've had two seasons and to watch uh, everything that's going on from the very top of the, of the ownership group all the way down through the players, our crowds, our fans, our, our supporters, um, to watch it just continue to grow and continue to grow has been really a lot of fun. That's amazing that you guys were able to grow. Um, so I know COVID was a difficulty for you guys. Yeah. Were there any other difficulties trying to get started up or having the games? Yeah, I mean, there's a whole long list of mm -hmm. things that are challenging when you start anything mm -hmm. up, 
right? Yeah. And, and so I've been incredibly impressed with not only our owners, but also the people that work in the administrative side of this club. You know, I, I'm really just focused on the team. That's my job is with the team. But there's a whole bunch of other people that are working behind the scenes to make sure that the crowd experience is great and our sponsors are, are happy and trying to attract new sponsors and grow the crowds. Um, and so the professionalism of the organization from very top to the bottom has been something I've been very, very impressed with. Um, people are working very hard to put a great product on the field. Yeah, that's nice. Um, so can you explain um, a little bit about the different leagues in the U.S. compared to like smaller clubs? Around? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you, if you think of a pyramid, at the mm -hmm. very top of the pyramid is the MLS. Yeah. So that's the highest level of professional soccer in our country. And then you start working down the levels. And so there's the USL Championship, and we're part of the USL organization. Uh, championship, League One, League Two. Right, so there's yeah. three levels within the USL. We're in the USL League Two at the moment. Uh, we've started there intentionally. We're trying mm -hmm. to grow our product and put our team together and get all the pieces in place. And then we will start to move up the pyramid to next step would be League One, which would be the full blown, full year professional situation. And that's our next step. And we're looking at probably around 2024 for the jump from League Two, which you might think of as maybe the highest amateur level mm -hmm. in the country right now. We yeah. use a lot of college players. Um, the guys that aspire to be professional, uh, and we uh, are, are building the team from that base. And then when we get everything in place and we're ready to make the next step to League One, uh, that'll happen in, hopefully in the next year or two. And really that's tied to stadium. We're building a stadium in downtown Fort Wayne that is still kind of off in the distance a little bit. So once that gets a little bit more solidified, it, then we'll be make, ready to make the jump. That's really great. So. What would you say you're doing to help prepare for the next step and how does that make you feel? Yeah, so we've made a, a, a purposeful decision um, mm -hmm. to, to act as professional as we can even when we're not professional yet. Yeah. And so what we're trying to do with our players is give these guys an opportunity now if they're coming for the summer months um, to say, okay, look, for these three months, you're going to be in the most professional environment that we're able to provide for you. So they have a taste of what it feels like to take the next step. Now, I played at the professional level. We also have probably the greatest, you know, resource that we have in our club is DeMarcus Beasley, who's a world famous player that's from Fort Wayne, Indiana. You wow. know, he played in four World Cups for the United States and played all over the world. Had an incredible career. He's, he's part and parcel of what we're doing with the club. And so the guys not only have the coaching staff to, to look at, but DeMarcus has, you know, he left home at 16 and signed a pro contract and has, was a pro until he was 40 when he retired. And so all of those years in clubs all over the world, the guys have a great model of what it feels like, looks like the experience of being a professional athlete. And so we're trying to give them a little bit of a taste of that now. Yeah. It's always nice to have someone who can motivate the players. Um, so obviously, other than winning a championship, what else would you say is a goal for the team or what do you guys yeah. want to achieve? You know, I, I think for us, there's, there's a couple of things. The, the very first thing that we've been really focused on, what I've been really focused on with my coaching staff and as I go out and recruit players to come here, um, we want to build an, an excellent culture within the team. You yeah. know, I think that's really the biggest thing right now is I want players that want to play not just with each other, but for each other. I want players Team. that want to play for the badge, for the city, for the supporters. You know what I mean? Yeah. We live in a very me, me, me culture uh, in society right now. And so we're trying to build something that's a little bit different. We want guys to come in that are playing for each other. And, yeah. and so really be, you know, you said it, it's a team. We want to just be that team as tight as we can be. I was really proud of the group that we had last summer because they really started to embody that. So that's the first thing is our culture. And then our style of play, which we touched on earlier. We want to be a team that plays an attractive style that's great for the fans to watch, but also one that will be successful. And so modern players, they want the ball at their feet. We want the ball. So it's a good fit for us. Um, and so we're really working on those two pieces right now is, is building a strong culture, one that will last, and then our style of play. So I know you guys are working on building a strong team and like unity. Do you guys spend a lot of time together outside of just playing, trying to build? We do, team yeah. Bonding? We're actually very fortunate because we, we lived together. Oh, nice. So we all lived in the, in the campus housing here mm -hmm. at PFW. And so wow. in the summer, it, people don't want to come by. There's guys living in there, mm -hmm. that, that, including the coaches. We were all there together. 
And so we trained on here on the campus here as well at PFW um, over at the Hefner Fields. So we'd walk over in the morning and train and then, you know, as much as we can do to spend time together. There's really no magic in building a team other than just spending time together. Um, you know, the more we get to know each other, the, the stronger the relationship is, the deeper the relationship is, the harder we are to beat on the field. And so we do, we're, we're very purposeful and intentional about the team building part of it. And a lot of it has to do with just spending time together. And then there's so much to do in Fort Wayne. And so a lot of yeah. them come from outside of the city. So whether it's, you know, going to a Tin Caps game at night or, you know, we, we caught a, a Comets game just before their playoff run. You know, those kinds of things are really fun for the players as well and gets them out into the community in a different way. Yeah. Well, that's amazing. Have I not asked something that you would like to talk about or let everybody know? No, I just hope that everybody gets a chance to come out and watch a game because the one thing I will tell you is that the, the games are really exciting. Yeah. The crowds are really great. Um, you know, we, we're playing now for two seasons in the league and we go, you know, all over the place in our league and play these different games. There's nothing like playing here. Every, every team that comes here says the same thing. They say, wow, you guys have got something really special yeah. going on. And that's a great testament to our supporters. Mm -hmm. And we want to do the best we can for them on the field. But we want people to come out and experience it because it's really a lot of fun. Yeah, well, you also have to take credit for that because you've been a great coach to them. And it seems like you guys are very motivated and driven to getting to where you guys want to be. I appreciate that. Yeah. So, um, Coach Avery, once again, I appreciate you for joining us. I hope you and the club have an amazing season. Um, that will be all for today's episode of Hello Fort Wayne. Check out College TV in the basement of the library and follow our Instagram and YouTube channel at College TV Fort Wayne. And you can follow FW, um, FC on Instagram at Fort Wayne FC. Once again, I'm Alexandra Ruiz and I'll see you next time.